is this has to do with the text messages that the victim sent to her boyfriend the night she disappeared according to prosecutors told her boyfriend that Andy was in her bedroom and that she was scared. What, what's your take on the prosecution possibly culminating its case in chief with the testimony of the boyfriend and those text messages? I think it's extremely important for the state and I would anticipate the state sort of trying to tie this into that the jailhouse witness that we heard from and Hello, creepy stepdad alert. Why is, does the stepdad, why does the defendant want to know if he has any naked pictures of his stepdaughter? That is just so un, unnerving to me and, and creepy. Um, and, you know, finally to the point, he asked him so many times to the point that he was like, fine, yes, I got him and he lied. I mean, you know, was he intimidated? Does I go along with the victim's statement to her boyfriend that, He's in my room. I'm scared. I mean, she doesn't say he's in my room. He, she says I'm scared. Mm -hmm. And that's the last thing anyone ever heard from the victim and extremely important in this case. It really is some of the final final words and so ominous sounding. You really and now that we know what the evidence, physical evidence is and what actually happened to her. So he really didn't have an answer for why she would text that to her boyfriend, Susan. He said something about he was in the living room asleep on the couch. And that's another incident that you know, Chantel Oakley, the victim's mother, said that was odd. She thought maybe he was pretending to be asleep on the couch when she got home later that night. Just a lot of circumstantial evidence here. What, what's your take overall on the prosecution? And I know we talked about the DNA evidence, not quite where, they, where it needed to be, but you think they can recover by culminating case with going back to the victim's own words. Sure they can. The, the DNA evidence is not the strongest part of the prosecution's case, but most certainly they have plenty of other evidence that will get them over the threshold for proving their case. And I, I think that, you know, going back to the statements when the defendant is being questioned, he is not going to be someone who's telling the truth. He already changed the story that he was at work all day and then he was at work and then he had to go get drugs and then he changed it again. I mean, he has the motive. Let's look at the, why he would be lying. Why he would be lying versus why the victim would randomly send a text message like that and then end up gone forever. Yeah, and speaking of motive, what about the surprise jailhouse snitch witness we just heard from earlier this morning? We had Dominique Mungo talk about he was in jail. He knew Riley. He knew Andy. Andy kept hounding him excessively, asking if Dominique had nude or suggestive photos from Riley over the weeks and days, multiple times. What did that do for the prosecution? It strengthened their case. It gave them uh, some some sort of motive. Um, it, again, I I say it again. Creepy stepdad alert. Rose, <laughs> why would you even be asking that? Like, why couldn't he be asking things like, well, how you know, what do you, anything other than do you have any naked photos? It is inappropriate and it's weird. It's crossing weird boundaries. And he was just like so. He kept asking him about it. And, you know, juries will convict without a, a motive. We saw that in the uh, Chris Isaac case. But it certainly is giving us more motive than we had in that case. Oh, yeah. These